Hey everybody, my name is Jason Halliday, and this is my ECE 591 literature review. This presentation is about the Vision Transformer Adapter for Dense Predictions. During this presentation, I will give a brief introduction to attention. Then, I will talk about the Vision Transformer. After that, I will go into detail about the function of a Vision Transformer Adapter. Then, I will discuss the application of the Vision Transformer Adapter for object detection. First of all, what are transformers? Transformers are a type of neural network that use attention to learn and predict outputs. Attention allows transformers to remember relevant information that helps it determine a desired output based on the previous output and correlated inputs. Attention allows the transformer, in theory, to reference and remember any correlated input, making them exceptional for language processing. Recursive neural networks, or RNNs, are also able to re remember previous inputs, but they are limited to a much shorter memory. Attention uses three categories of information, the query, key, and value. Say you are researching a specific topic. The topic of research would be the query. Now, you are looking through a library to find a book that will help with your research. The title of each book is the key. If a title strongly matches the topic of research, you can think of this as having a high attention score or weight. The contents of the book are the value. Using attention, a weight will be applied to the values so that the values with higher correlation based on the key and query will be given more weight. This makes sense because you want the model to pay attention or focus on the values with higher correlation to any given input. In this language processing example, a transformer network is used to write parts of a story. In the story, the words that are not highlighted are an input set for the transformer. The words highlighted in blue are the outputs of the transformer network. By utilizing attention and knowing the correlation between all words in this set of inputs, as well as previous inputs, the model is able to write parts of the story. How can transformers be used for computer vision applications? This is the vision transformer. It uses a classic transformer encoder along with some external modifications to allow the vision transformer to learn information from images. The vision transformer came from a paper published in 2021 called An Image is Worth 16 by 16 Words by Dasavitsky et al. Since the publishing of this paper, vision transformers have beat out convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, for image recognition, since they are able to view the image more globally when compared to CNNs. The vision transformer works by splitting images into smaller image patches. These patches are then linearly embedded into a one-dimensional vector. The length of this vector can be chosen or changed based on the hardware limitations. A larger vector will use more memory and contribute to more learnable parameters in the model. After projection and flattening, the patches are now considered patch embeddings or tokens. In this stage, the resulting vectors no longer contain pixel information. In this example, the number of values in the token are not the same as the number of pixels and channels in the original patch. The original patch contained 16 pixels by 16 pixels by three channels of data, effectively 768 values. This is linear project, linearly projected and flattened into a one dimensional token that contains 1024 values. Next, positional embeddings are added to each token. These positional embeddings are one-dimensional and learnable. 
an additional fake patch is included in the input sequence. The addition of a fake patch is referred to as the class token. The output of the class token from the transformer encoder is what will be used as the image representation. Each token is then input into a transformer encoder. The transformer encoder contains a multi-head self-attention layer and a multi-layer perceptron, or MLP layer. Layer normalization is applied before multi-head attention and MLP layers. There are also residual connections between the input and output of both the multi-head attention and the MLP operations. This helps prevent vanishing or exploding gradients. L number of transformer encoders can be stacked during this operation. For final classification of the image, the output of the transformer encoder is used as the input for an MLP with one hidden layer. Adapting vision transformers for segmentation applications. The paper Vision Transformer Adapter for Dense Predictions by Chen et al. explores the use of VIT for dense prediction tasks by using an external training-free adapter that introduces image-related knowledge to a pre-trained vision transformer. The goal of the paper was to close the gap between the classic VIT and vision-specific transformers for dense prediction tasks specifically. The plain VIT commonly struggles with dense prediction tasks. Examples of vision-specific transformers include the Swin transformer and the Pyramid vision transformer, which involve a modified form of the vision transformer specific to image inputs. The motivation for using a plain vision transformer is the fact that it can train on multimodal data like video, image, and text which makes it easier to train and encourages semantic rich representations. In other words, the vision transformer allows for a higher number of features that can be correlated with a given input. The VIT adapter model is split up into two parts, the vision transformer itself and the VIT adapter, which runs alongside the plain VIT. The vision transformer consists of a patch embedding and L number of transformer encoder layers. The adapter contains three modules. The first is a spatial prior module, which learns spatial features from the input image. The second is a spatial feature injector, which injects spatial prior knowledge into the VIT. The third module is a multi-scale feature extractor, which can extract many levels of features from the single scale features of VIT. Starting with the VIT, the image is divided up into 16 by 16 pixel patches. The patches are then flattened and projected into D-dimensional tokens. Then, Positional embeddings are added to these tokens. These tokens will be input through L number of encoder layers. Now for the VIT adapter, which runs in parallel to the VIT. The image is input into a spatial prior module, which will learn features at three levels of resolution, 1 8th, 1 16th, and 1 32nd. The resulting output is called a feature map. This is done with three convolutions and a max pooling layer, followed by stride two three by three convolutions to double the channels and reduce the size of the feature maps. This results in a feature pyramid. This feature pyramid will be flattened and concatenated for feature interaction. The VIT adapter, feature injector and extractor stages will be repeated n times. In the case of this paper, there are typically four encoder layers. Given n interactions, the VIT encoder is split up into n blocks. Each of these blocks contains 
L over N encoder layers. Or in other words, the number of encoder layers is divided by the number of feature interactions. For example, if there were 16 encoder layers and four feature interactions, then there would be four encoder layers between each feature interaction. For each block of encoding, spatial priors are injected by the spatial feature injector. Then the multi-level features will be extracted from the output of the encoder block by the multi-scale feature extractor. After n feature interactions, the result is a high quality multi-level feature map. The last step is to split up each level of features, 1 8th, 1 16th, and 1 32nd, and upsample the 1 8th scale features with 2 by 2 transpose convolution to create a 1 4th scale feature map. Using the four levels of feature maps, the model can be used for dense prediction tasks. Here is a closer look at the spatial prior module. Many recent studies show that CNNs can assist transformers in picking up on local features, since transformers tend to focus on more global features. The spatial prior module will operate in parallel with the patch embedding layer of the VIT, so this does not change the architecture of the vision transformer. The stem was borrowed from ResNet. The stem consists of three convolution layers and a max pooling layer, followed by a stack of stride two three by three convolutions, finally finishing with several one by one convolutions to project the feature maps into D dimensions. The result of this is a feature pyramid and three of three different resolutions. This feature pyramid is then flattened into feature tokens which will be passed to the spatial feature injector and used at the input of VIT later on. The spatial feature injector is used to inject spatial priors into VIT. This is done by taking the tokens that have been outputted from the linear embedding stage of VIT and using them as the query for cross attention. Then the spatial features learned from the spatial prior module will be used as the key in value. Cross-attention is used to inject the learned features from the spatial prior module into the vision transformer tokens that will be then put through the encoder. The equation for attention can be seen in figure one, and the result of injecting spatial features into the VIT input features is represented by equation two. Each normalization is a layer normalization. The cross attention is computed between the VIT input features and the spatial features. Gamma is a learnable vector to balance the attention layers output with VIT input features. Gamma is initialized to zero. The idea behind this is to make sure that the input features of the VIT will not be heavily modified by the injection of spatial priors. The final module of the VIT adapter is the multi-scale feature extractor. The difference between this stage and the feature injector is that now the output features of the VIT encoder will be used as the key and value and the spatial features from the spatial prior module will be used as the query. The result of this cross attention is then passed through a feed forward network to extract the multi-level features from the VIT. The reason why this is important is because VITs normally have a fixed resolution that is locked to the patch size. This allows for the VIT to make much better dense predictions for smaller resolutions than the patch size. The spatial feature injector and multi-scale feature extractor stages may be repeated L times, one time for every VIT encoder used in the model. Now that we have some understanding of the VIT and VIT adapter, let's take a look at some of the results. The VIT adapter was split into four sizes for testing, which can be seen in the table. 
the number of feature interactions was locked to four for every model. The attention heads were increased from six heads to 12 and 16 heads for the big and large adapters respectively. The feed forward network that is located in the feature extractor of the adapter was increased in size for every adapter. In the paper, the COCO or common object in context dataset was used to compare four sizes of VIT adapters with the plain VIT, as well as the SWIN transformer and PVT transformer. The COCO benchmark is an object detection benchmark. The metric used for comparing the models is average precision. The VIT adapter greatly outperforms the plain VIT. The VIT adapter also outperforms the SWIN and PVT V2 transformers using a comparable amount of parameters. One thing to note is that the VIT adapter B appears twice, once with ImageNet 1K pre-training and the second time with multimodal pre-training. For the same amount of learnable parameters, the model trained using multimodal data improved by 1.6%, which, which approaches the performance of the larger VIT adapter. As mentioned earlier, the addition of convolution operating in parallel to the vision transformer assists in capturing higher frequency or lower scale features. In figure A, a Fourier transform was taken of the feature maps. It shows that the VIT adapter yielded higher amplitudes of higher frequency features. Figure B shows the detection results for the image. The plain vision transformer did not capture all of the donuts in the image. It seemed to miss out on the donuts that were further from the camera, as well as donuts on the edge of the image. This is likely due to the global nature of the plain VIT, making it perform poorly at lower level pixel detection. The VIT adapter model successfully identified all donuts in the image including partial donuts that were not totally captured within the frame of the image. Finally, figure C shows a stride eight feature map. The VIT adapter has a much clearer view of the features of all the donuts, while the plain VIT's feature map is not as distinct. The results on the left describe two different frameworks to compare the results between the VIT adapter and various other transformer architectures. These results show that the VIT adapter succeeds in improving upon the VIT and other architectures with comparable number of parameters. For the ADE 20K dataset, which is an image segmentation dataset, the VIT adapter of all sizes showed the best multi-class intersection over union performance. The VIT adapter model also beat out the competition for multi-scale testing. The results for the VIT adapter L demonstrate the positive effect on performance that multimodal training has on intersection over union. Compared to the VIT adapter L that was trained on ImageNet 22K, the model trained on multimodal dataset improved by 1.3 and 1.6 on the FPN and UpperNet frameworks respectively. The results on the right are for the COCO dataset and the ADE 20K dataset. The results were achieved by combining the VIT adapter with the state-of-the-art detection and segmentation frameworks MASK2Former and HTC++. MASK2Former is a masked attention mask transformer and HTC stands for Hybrid Task Cascade. Also, the multimodal training of BIT V2 was used for these models. The results show that the adapter is capable of reaching state-of-the-art performance. The advanced pre-training techni techniques used have a strong effect on the results, but the study shows that the plain VIT detectors and segmenters can keep up and sometimes beat out image-specific architectures. The references used include Vision Transformer Adapter for Dense Predictions, 
And an image is worth 16 by 16 words.